everybody for a week for the Wildcats. Uh, Coach Sumlin taking his team up to Salt Lake City and take you to uh, Utah this Friday night. Let's go ahead and open up for questions for Coach. Coach, what concerns you about the Utah defense? Well, there's a lot of things. They're number one, the number one defense in the league statistically. Uh, number one run defense in the league. Number one red zone defense in the league. So it's you know it's the best defense in the league right now, and they've got uh, a lot of um, experience, um, a lot of size, and a lot of athleticism. That's they play well together. You know they they haven't given up a bunch of big plays. They've um, really limited people in their run game, and um, you know Chase Hansen is right behind. Uh, to go with that, you know Chase has been right behind Colin Schooler, one and two in the league in tackles for loss. So they're a talented football team that's playing very, very well, and particularly after last weekend. What's the biggest challenge posed by a short week like this? Um, the the combination of recovery. Um, and and uh, preparation, uh, particularly when you when you have to travel in that short week, also. So you know you you're the recovery piece because you you're playing night games. Um, you know really, then balancing that with well, it's a little bit different than the NFL, a lot different because we have school. So you know if guys are in class right now. Uh, whereas, you know, the, the next level, even though it's a Sunday to Thursday jump sometimes, you know, you, you, you don't have that, that piece. So um, school studies, some exams, things like that, and then still uh, with the travel on a short week in the, with the preparation, those are the real challenges. What you learned about the physicality of your defense through six games? You know, I don't know. The, we, we talked the other night. I think some, I can't remember who asked, but I, I know that um, it, it, our team's is a little bit different across the board just because we've had so many um, interchanging and movable parts. You know, uh, where we were four weeks ago or three weeks, four weeks ago uh, from a personnel standpoint, offensively and defensively, is completely different than where we are now. Uh, you know, we've got a. You know, PJ's playing defensive end. You know, uh, it, you know, we 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 didn't have we have a guy who missed the first, you know, first game, first couple games, and it had two interceptions and a touchdown the other night. So, you know, we've we've got a bunch of guys on the field that really haven't been out there, that are veteran players, and you know, I think what you've seen is the addition of 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 you know PJ. Playing in has had a big effect on on our our team up front. Um, if that hopefully that can continue because the last couple games he's been very very effective, and uh, you know I, I don't think you can deny that his return has has really really helped um, shore up our front because of his size and and what he commands from a maybe a double team standpoint. Some people might say well, Brandon McAway made some bad decisions on some of those throws. But what did you like about kind of the way your defense? I think I think it's a combination of things. I think you know there was some um, um, serious adjustments made at halftime, um, schematically, that also created some issues for for Cal. And uh, I think uh, you know I, I thought our defensive staff did a nice job at halftime of, of really changing up some things um, and, and showing a little bit more zone, you know, playing some drop eight. Uh, creating some situations where we could keep the ball in front of us and uh, and react to it instead of, you know, so much man-to-man -man where, <clears throat> you know, we had to have two game plans last week for two different quarterbacks. Um, but, you know, when you, you play man like that and you can give up some big plays, you're able to load people in the box. But also if guys are running down the field covering, their backs are to the quarterback, particularly when he's running. So playing a little bit more zone in the second half made a lot more sense and created some issues for for um, their quarterback. Talk about dropping eight. Was that another surprise to you that that Schooler would stand out in that area as well, or did you kind no. of maybe? No, uh -uh. I mean you got to remember the last play of the game a year ago. I'm watching that last week, and he's defending. So it wasn't drop eight, but 
it was more of a Tampa two situation, a red two is what we talk about. And you know, he's defending the, the, the last throw at the goalpost, right? So he's getting he's getting depth there last year. So he's playing on I mean, he's been playing in space um, for a while just because he leads the league in tackles for loss doesn't mean, you know, he can't drop and do a lot of different things. He's as I said last week, he's playing about as well as anybody. He's one of the best players in this conference. Jamari Joyner experience more important than the risk of what could be a freshman mistake making a big play in a key tackle. Well, I mean, that's if you're scared to play people, you can't, you know, when, when you're going to play them. So um, we've got a lot of people out there playing. You know, we, we played uh, played Bam early in the year, you know, and then he got nicked up. And, and it, it, it's, it's all relative, you know, and compared to, you know, who else is, you know, Khalil's been, uh, hasn't been 100%. And so we have to have a plan for that also. And, you know, what is that plan? Is it wait till he gets hurt and or wait till he's really hurt and can't play? Um, no, we, we, we need to have a plan and we need to have the, that kind of experience. And he was, you know, the, the game went, as I said the other night, the game went uh, completely different because we wanted to get him in there in the, in the third quarter also. But, you know, the time of possession, we just didn't have a, we just didn't have, we used to have ball enough, uh, and you know I didn't want to put him in there. And, and, and to your question, you know we made the decision it was going to be the third series in the first half, unless um, we were backed up inside our own 15, which would I didn't want to put him in that position. What did Jamari over? Did he jump over Rhett Rodriguez on the depth chart? Because Rhett has experience and played it. Yeah, Rhett, Rhett played early, but you know we it's there's a lot of different situations on this team where. Where Bill Red's still going to play. I mean, it's just, uh, you know, a lot of different situations and scenarios in this football team where um, it's not necessarily one, two, three, four. And so I told you at the beginning of the year, we'll give you a depth chart, but it really doesn't mean anything. So, you know, that's, it, it, we, we have a plan for, for that. Red is still very much a part of, of what we're doing. What did Jamari show you in practice that impressed you or led you to you have the confidence in him to well, he's been I mean he's he's been working like crazy. He's gotten better. Um, he's a tremendous athlete. Um, works at it. You know, it's and, and let me just say this and the, the question is it's not one just Jamari. I mean, Rhett's played, obviously he was more experienced earlier in the year. Um, and it, it gave us the opportunity not just for for <clears throat> Jamari, but also for Kevin Doyle to to really get some more reps and in more time, and uh, you know, uh, just because that that happened the other night doesn't mean the other quarterbacks aren't aren't coming along too. So you know, we have to have a plan based on you know where we are in this league and who's going to give us the best chance to win in those games, and uh, you know, we we really know what we have in in Rhett. I think that's you know that's why we he was he's played and I think he's done a nice job I think he's what seven for eight or something like that and, and has moved the team and been in those situations but you know some of these young guys are coming along and and with you know it's that's not a cut and dry situation with with the new redshirt rule as I said beforehand it doesn't hurt you at all um, what it does is give guys experience um, and and if you know, at the end of three, four games, you know, four games, you make that decision based on, you know, what it, whether that year's gone or not. So there's there's really no no downside to a young guy playing right now and getting this kind of experience because if we need him to be the guy, he's been in those pressure situations um, instead of, uh, as you asked, you know, just running him out there and, and he's got to start a game in case of an injury or something like that. So, you know, I, I think this rule is, is this is an example, you know, of, of, of where you see a lot of people, you're gonna see a lot of people using that right now, just because of, um, you know, it doesn't really hurt you, you know, it can only help build depth. And that's, um, that was a great experience for him the other night, and we wanted to get him more. I just, it, the situation at third quarter was one that, you know, then you're in a one score game, then you're, you know, it's and you're backed up. It just it just didn't make sense to to put him in that situation. Um, but you know, going forward, I, I, we're we're going to have some more situations for 
he and, and, and maybe others to play. Has it been an emphasis for the coaching staff to start recruiting junior college players more, specifically linemen? Um, more than what? I mean, it seems like you guys have sent out a lot of offers to junior college prospects. I mean, but, but more than what? More than usual. I mean, I've... This is our first year of recruiting. I know, but like... So, you know... Right. Uh, I would say right now what we are doing is recruiting the, the best the best um, players at the position that um, of need. And, um, you know, what does that look like? It depends on um, a lot of different things. And so, you know, if it's a, in, in, obviously, you know, looking at our offensive line situation, um, our numbers are not where they need to be. And, and you know, as, as a coach just <laughs> told me a long time ago, the closer you get to the football, you know, there's grown men in there playing. So it's hard for 17-, 18-year-old guys to come in and, and play at a high level uh, in the offense and defensive line. And, you know, maturity does matter. Strength matters. Uh, size matters. And, and a lot can happen to a guy in, in two years in junior college. Um, from a size, strength, and maturity standpoint. So, um, yeah, we've, we've, uh, we're, we're looking around for the best guys that, that we, can, we can recruit to, to uh, have the ability to help us immediately. When do you consider it a good time to use a trick play? When no one is expecting it. <laughs> That's the truth. <laughs> like the fake field goal. Side. You know he's you know, all right. I, you know he's been. Uh, I tell you what, he's he's something. He you know, it, it, here's a guy that. It, it, it's back to your question. Here's a guy that that physically, as a high school player, you know, is 320 some pounds, right? And athletic. That's a different situation. And uh, he's still he's still um, growing as a player every week. You know, and 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 learning the position, but he has—he's a very, very gifted, talented young guy. But um, you know, he's got to continue to improve his strength. He's got to continue to understand the game. Um, you know, we're getting you know, look last week, and guys are sliding fronts on him. We're getting edge pressure. Things are happening fast after the, you know, we had—we struggled early in the game with um, with edge pressure late. With meaning, you know, guys blitzing from the outside or safeties coming down um, after, I mean, right at the snap of the ball. And that's really tough on a young guy to communicate. Um, but he's continuing to grow. Um, you know, I think, you know, overall, I, I don't know that we could ask him to be any freshman that's played left tackle and then right tackle, you know, halfway through the season. It, it, to play as the play he uh, the play as well as he has, I don't think you could ask much more from a true freshman, and he's he's going to continue to get better. Kevin uh, Sean Poindexter tweeted out his thoughts on that targeting play at the end of the game. What were your thoughts on what you saw there? You know, I don't comment on officiating. What's that? What about the, just the play? Well, I mean, it's hard to make any comment about the play itself, you know, without talking about the result. So, you know, it's uh, a lot of things happen on onside kicks, but that that was a little bit different. Do you manage um, Khalil or other banged up players any differently this week than you would because there's one fewer day than you would in other weeks? Well, I, you know, it's. Uh, I think you manage the team differently, you know, because it's one fewer day with travel also. So that that is an, another, you know, you gain you gain a day if it's a home game, right, on the other team, because basically you're you're here, and then you're traveling Thursday. Um, whereas you, you can keep your regular routine at home, and really kind of stay in that 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 situation with with treatment with with trying to help guys get ready to play Friday night so you know it's I think it's a completely different schedule 
for us. I mean, I know it's a completely different schedule for us just because of uh, because of the short weekend, because of travel, and you know, you have to give student athletes a, a day off in um, during the week. So, um, you know, it's it's uh, as I said, the the challenge like is is recovery and preparation, and so how you do that becomes important. Fortunately, um, really. Unfortunately, I think my first year at Houston in the Conference USA, we played a Tuesday night game, a Thursday night game. I think we played a, a Friday night game. I mean, it, we we had to sit down and get a calendar together at the beginning of the year, just based on you know the the the, the games that we played, the um, the days that we played, and the travel. You know, because you know, I think we played Marshall on a Tuesday night. You know, and so you gained a, a couple of days, but you're still, it's just odd because of, because of uh, school and the things that you, you don't face on a Saturday. Is the practice schedule different this week? Yes. Is it still Tuesday, Tuesday, Wednesday? Or, <clears throat> but is the, this is the, what you do in practice different? Yes. It's all different. It's, yes. Yeah, it's different. It's different starting today. As far as the zone read game uh, goes, do you think there's still more meat on the bone there? We've seen more of Khalil running the last couple of weeks. Do you think there's even maybe another level that it can go to get to? Yeah, I think so. I think so. I think you could see it, you know, and, and just because, you know, the other pieces that, you know, that it, even it, when he pulls it, there were some opportunities, but I think, you know, people are playing some other things and, and be honest with you, if, if we're flipping it out after he pulls it and uh, on screens, and I mean, Saturday we were pretty consistently getting four, five, six yards with flipping out there. Our receivers did a great job of blocking. Uh, the reason those are open is because there's two guys out there and there's, you know, there's only two guys to, to uh, defend them and sometimes one and those other guys are a little closer to the box to play the the uh, quarterback run game and to get him out of there, you know, he, he made some really good decisions of flipping it out and our, our receivers ran hard. And, you know, if you're going to get four, five, six, seven uh, doing that, that's just as effective as him pulling the ball. It may not look as as <laughs> as, as great, but it's as good as, a uh, you know, if you're going to get four yards anytime you're doing that, that's as good as a run. And if you're going to average, you know, four or five yards on, on those plays, then I thought that, uh, you know, up until the the drive, as I said, the, you know, the biggest turning point of the game, and then which flipped the field from a um, field position standpoint was the fourth down stop. And then the offense coming back down the field. And even though J.J. fumbled the ball, we were able to flip the field position and get back to midfield with that type of uh, – um, offense, where he pulled it a couple times, we threw we threw the screens and and um, and really separated the defense just to get and and we're pretty consistent in moving it. He said that Khalil said there was a safety like forty five yards deep. I don't know if that's the exact amount, but they were they playing a safety set. They, they well, they played like that. Um, he wasn't 45 yards deep, but he's, I mean, come on. But uh, I don't know, yeah, he, he, a lot of guys haven't played quarterback. Sometimes it does look like he's that deep, if he's playing that deep. But they, you know, it, they had played um, at free safety, and uh, he's a heck of a player, too. He's, um, But they, they played him about 20 yards deep a lot coming into the game also. So, you know, because he's uh, – He's a kick returner. He's a hurdler, 110 high hurdler. It's a fast guy that, that can get off the, out of the middle of the field is, and go help. And so, you know, with that depth, um, I mean, they, they, you got two guys at, at Cal that you know, defensively know what they're doing and the head coach and the defensive coordinator. So, you know, they, they had a plan that was a little bit different for us Saturday night. And, and um, you know, I thought it was a, a – Again, a, a, a team win just because, you know, when, when one phase, whether it's special teams, whether it's defense, whether it's offense, you know, offense's job is no matter what's going on defense to, to score more points than the opponent. You know, defense's job is to, is to 
you know, shut down the other team. And uh, but to get the the uh, the turnovers that we got, and also the scores off the of turnovers, you know, was it was a team win. And um, you know that that was that was good for our defense moving forward because I feel like they built felt some built a little bit more confidence than they had probably coming into the game or probably been three weeks ago. Third and nine run by Kalos, going back to that, that, that excited so many people because that's what people saw from him last year. I'm just curious, that's the first time you've seen a run like that from him in a game, what, what you saw when you saw it. I thought he was doing his job. So, you know, he's, um, there, there have been, you know, some different defenses and some different things that, that people have had put in place, you know, and I think because he hasn't, uh, hasn't run as much, you know. Um, the defensive uh, defenses have kind of changed things a little bit. You know, it was very obvious against BYU what their plan was with the spy and and how they were determined to to keep him in the pocket by not, I mean, even running, just by guys coming up field and stopping on the edge and the spy in the middle. So we saw that for a couple of weeks, even against uh, Houston. So as you know, you start to develop some other things in the running game, you know, and, and some other attacks. You're, you're seeing different defenses now, and, and you know, he's, he's he, you know, he's just got to take advantage of what, what he sees. Just one more question. Yeah. Is there a different psychological impact when the defense scores versus when you get an offense uh, touchdown? Yeah, I don't know. I think it can be. For defense, as I said, you know, you, you can get a, uh, you know, I think it, it builds confidence for them, um, it, you know, but uh, it's also up, uplifts the team. Of course it does, you know, and, and uh, um, you know, psychologically, I don't know for players or anything like that, you know, it's, it, it, I, don't, I really couldn't answer that. I just know that it, it does, it does charge up the team and does, you know, Charge up the defense. What, what does the offensive line need to do to become more consistent? Um, well, you know, obviously, we, <laughs> it was, as much as I bragged about Leif for two weeks, you know, obviously he's been a real key to our consistency and, and our production. The games where he's played, we've been pretty productive. Um, you know, he's struggled the last couple of weeks with, with, uh, um, with injury, and, and so you don't see him as much out there, and so the, that consistency is not just in production, like, but it's in, in consistency with personnel. So you know we have not had consistent personnel um, for the last couple games, and because of that, the communication and moving guys from guard to to, to tackle and things like that. For two weeks, I thought when Leith was back, you know we were pretty consistent with our production and our personnel. So, you know, we just, we, it's not just the production. I think we gotta be consistent with our personnel and that's, that's hard to control right now. So, um, particularly in a situation where you have a guy that was basically has been a, a game day decision. So you have to practice some other guys and, and see what's gonna happen. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, All right, thank you.